In the previous section, you saw how to use the graphical tools to work with your virtual machines. The videos in this section will largely mirror what you saw in those videos, but we're going to stay in PowerShell the entire time. The great benefit of PowerShell is that once you become familiar with the tasks, you can usually complete them much more quickly and precisely than you can with the graphical tools. This first video is going to be about the creation and removal of virtual machines in your cluster. The next video will work through the memory options available to virtual machines and how to change them. The third video will be devoted to working with the virtual hard drives attached to a virtual machine. The fourth video will cover virtual adapter settings. And the final video will discuss changing the automated actions that your cluster will take with virtual machines. To begin your PowerShell journey, run Update Help. Always remember that you have Get Help at your disposal. You can also use the aliases Help and Man. The first command that we're going to use is New VM. So let's see what it has to offer by using Get Help with the full switch. We're not going to examine all possible options here, but scan through the parameters. Notice what is required, what is not, and what the parameters mean. After the parameters, you can see some examples. If you get stuck, these can sometimes help you determine how to proceed. At the end, you see a link to a web page that contains the information that you see here. Now, let's use this to create a new virtual machine. First, enter new VM. Do you remember all those parameters? Of course not. Just put in a hyphen and press tab. If you continue pressing tab, PowerShell will automatically cycle through the available parameters. If you type a letter and press tab, PowerShell will automatically show you parameters that only start with that letter. Type as much as you know and then press tab and it will find that parameter. You probably saw that most of the parameters aren't required, but we're going to enter about as much information as we would have in the GUI. In this one line, we've done almost everything the wizard does. The one exception is that we can't connect any media to the virtual CD drive here. That problem has a very quick remedy in the set VM DVD drive command. Now, you could just run start VM against that VM, and it would boot off the DVD you just attached. What we want to do is convert it to high availability mode. This is very simply done. With the pipeline feature of PowerShell, you can easily perform the virtual machine creation and its conversion to high availability in a single step. First, use the up arrow on your keyboard to retrieve the new VM command we just entered. We'll go back and change a couple of things. So that's a different VM and so that the hard drive doesn't collide. Now, press end on your keyboard. Then enter a pipe character. Then just type add cluster virtual machine role commandlet and press enter. This creates the virtual machine and then passes it down to the pipeline where the next command converts it into a cluster resource. Reversing this procedure is usually fairly simple. When you use the above commands, it created a set of cluster resources with the same name as the virtual machine. You can see all cluster resources very easily with get cluster resource. Look in the center column under owner group, and you can see that all the objects related to the VMs have an owner group with the same name as the VM. Because of that, we can remove high availability from a VM with one simple command. This leaves the VM itself intact. Get rid of it with remove VM. Unfortunately, you can't always be certain that the cluster group will be named after the virtual machine. It's rare for anyone to intentionally name them differently, but one very common scenario in which this happens is when you have two virtual machines with the same name, perhaps because of an import or export operation. You can have two virtual machines with the same name, but you can't have multiple cluster resources with the same name. So the cluster will modify the group and resource name. In order to be sure that you're removing the correct cluster object, just use the virtual machine identifier. You can see it like this. All you have to do is pipe that to remove cluster group. Now you're free to re remove the VM. With a little effort and a bit more advanced PowerShell, you could remove the resources and the VM in a single line. 
If you're not yet that comfortable with PowerShell, then it's better to start with the simpler forms like those you've seen here. Regardless of your comfort level, you now know how to create and delete highly available virtual machines in PowerShell. In the next video, we'll work on memory settings.